Welcome to Film in 5D, the show with everything film and the 5D Mark II. I'm your host, Aaron Hammack. This week, we adjust the nightmare that is aliasing and more a pattern interference. With the increasing availability of professional grade products and their consistent decrease in price, independent filmmakers like myself can make quality work at minimal expense. Now, more than ever, with the Canon 5D Mark II, even you can make professional quality films. However, filmmaking isn't easy, but hey, let's figure it out. On the show, we'll be covering everything DSLR video has to offer, as well as all of the bases from pre to post production. This show will also be featuring an array of short films and skits, all shot in the Canon 5D. So get your glasses on, because this is Film in 5D. So DSLR has produced very nice images as most of you know, and one of the main reasons for this is the processor within the camera. From what I understand, much of this image is constructed through digital means, by which the processor is essentially guessing the details of the image. The result? A very detailed, vibrant image that few cameras, especially video cameras, can hold up to. Unfortunately, the thing that makes a camera like the Canon 5D so great is also one of the things that makes some shots very difficult to capture. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> Makes sense to me. We're talking about aliasing and more a pattern interference. How does that make sense to you? I'm talking about a great camera with some issues. Yeah, but they're very small issues. Sometimes when the processor guesses, especially in situations of very fine detail, it guesses wrong and tries to depict detail that just isn't there. The result is more a pattern interference. So, like, it'll add more ugly to your face? <sighs> Some common situations you might find yourself in where more is most prevalent are Your subject is wearing a tightly striped shirt. Here you can see more affecting the shot. Also, if you're shooting a screen door, you will notice more. Other examples include certain patterns of carpet that will also result in more pattern interference. Another problem that you'll most certainly run into with your DSLR is aliasing. If you googled the term, you might run into some pretty complex definitions of what aliasing actually is. Wait, wait, wait. Is that some sort of reverse psychology trick thing? Aliasing? Yeah, like will I find some weird picture on the Google image? I don't know, you should try it out. Type in aliasing and see what you get. In order to keep it simple, I'm just going to use the landscaping example. The 5D takes pictures at a resolution of well over 5K, but it shoots video in under 2K. When that resolution is lowered inside the camera, the result is a landscaping in the vertical direction. Therefore, in situations where you have very fine lines or sharp edges, your image will have a very jagged look when it should be straight. That's like uh, low graphics settings in video games. Yeah, like 8-bit style. <laughs> Here's an example of aliasing. You can see the jagged edges, which is really ruining the image. Now obviously, video DSLRs have had a tremendous positive impact on the independent film community, and moray and aliasing are only small problems in the big picture of things. <laughs> Good one. What? Picture? What, that play on words? Yeah. What are you talking about? Oh, yeah, that was good. Next, we'll show you some of the steps you can take to reduce the effects of aliasing and moray for your shots. But first, I put together a montage of all the negative effects of aliasing and moray from the first 10 episodes. Very long, was it? Nah, dude, it's because we do pros. Hmm, I guess it's gonna be a short episode then. Oops. So, the first thing you should do to lessen the effects of aliasing and moray is use the flat image settings we gave you in this episode. The high sharpness of the default settings increases the chance that you'll run into either of these issues. Next, use your DSLR's shallow depth of field capabilities to your advantage. In many situations, you'll find that moray and aliasing is most common in the background in which case you can just put it slightly out of focus. Take this chain link fence as an example. You can even put the foreground slightly out of focus to fix the aliasing. It can also help to change the distance from the object that it is causing aliasing or more, or in some situations the focal length. Take this brick pattern for example. At this distance there is a heavy amount of more pattern interference, but if I move closer or further away it starts to go away. The final and arguably best solution that I have found is a filter that is designed to reduce the occurrence of moray and aliasing by 70%. Dude, we should get one. Yeah, dude, it's like 400 bucks. Screw that. You can find the one I'm talking about specifically here. It's 400 bucks and in limited supply, so I'm waiting for more versions to come out. 
The filter goes between the sensor and the lens, and adds about a one-third stop of light, thus taking an f-stop like 1.4 and making it 1.6, but it's still the best option available in my opinion. And that's it for this week. If you'd like, you can follow me on Twitter at www.twitter.com forward slash Aaron Hammock. And we'll be back next week to further discuss some of the limitations you might run into with your HDSLR. Uh, I was hoping you would call the 5D Canon. What are you talking about? You know, like H4N Zoom? Dude, H4N Zoom just sounds better than Zoom H4N. Straight up. Okay. Good. Sure. <laughs> nice. And we'll keep it simple and like, have you ever searched Blue Waffle? No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't search Blue Waffle. <laughs>